G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, I'm gonna do kind of a fun hypothetical. So obviously yesterday I made a video reacting to the new branding for the Tasmania Devils. Uh, their logo, their jumper, their design. You can see that in a separate video. I think it'll be the most recent video on this channel. Before I get into this video, I will clarify something. It has come to light that the jumper that was actually uh, you know, on display during that presentation is not actually the jumper that Tasmania is going to be rolling out. Now, if you were unaware of that, it's not really your fault because when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, I've missed an important detail here and made that video. Then I looked it up and I found six articles announcing the Tasmania jumper. And on the seventh article I found, right at the bottom, there was one little comment that said, oh, by the way, this is actually not the jumper they're rolling out. So it's mildly annoying, but I think it's also kind of good news because I think, you know, while the jumper that they displayed is probably going to be used maybe in their first game and apparently, you know, as a heritage kind of jumper, I did say in the video that I thought, you know, maybe it would, be, would have been an opportunity to come up with something a little bit cooler and modern. But anyway, enough of that, just so you're aware. In today's video, I thought it'd be kind of fun to come up with a hypothetical inaugural Tasmania team. They're going to be rolling out in round one of 2028, I presume, unless we're still dabbling with opening round by then. So in today's video, I have gone and looked at, you know, all the Tasmanian players in the league, who's likely to still be around, recruiting them for the Tasmania Devils, while also looking at some free agents that might be available around that time, as well as some other out of contract players to construct the first ever Tasmania team. Now, this is not really a prediction, kind of just a fun hypothetical. And I've constructed a team of 22. Like I said, the actual, like the mechanics of the way Tasmania is going to build their list is something I'm super interested in. You know, I'd imagine most people would be as well because we're also thinking about how does the introduction of a Tasmania team impact our own team. So what we do know, as I said in yesterday's video, but just to rehash it quickly, we do know that, you know, the AFL's looked at how the, the Northern teams in GWS and Gold Coast set up and are probably looking to try and come up with a team that's competitive quicker. Now, obviously GWS did pretty well, but I think it took them five years to make the finals for the first time. So naturally the AFL is going to think of ways to make this Tassie team more competitive more quickly. One interesting thing that I'd heard is that, you know, when GWS and Gold Coast entered the league in 2011 and 2012, they went into the draft with picks one, two, three, five, seven, nine, etc. Like they completely compromised the draft. But as far as I'm aware, they weren't able to trade those picks for players. I'm sure that's the case. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I know that they didn't. How they recruited a lot of their players was through free agency. Essentially, this is actually predating free agency as we know it now, but they were able to sign players like Gary Ablett Jr. as a free agent directly onto their list. There was no trade, although there was compensation picks generated. So the impact of that is that every time a, a team lost a player, they would get a compensation pick, but that would also essentially push everyone back in the draft order. Now with Tasmania, they might still be able to sign free agents. I'd imagine they would, but only if a player qualifies for free agency. Perhaps, I am speculating here. But the, the key difference will be apparently or at least it is believed to be the case now and things could change in the next four years. But Tasmania could potentially trade picks one, two, and three to clubs for their established players. This is actually a really good plus for everyone else because if you are a team that could lose a Gary Ablett Jr., for instance, that might cost Tasmania pick one in the draft. And not only does it not push everyone back, but those teams are therefore also compensated properly. So getting back to what I'm gonna to do today, uh, I'm gonna to go through all the Tasmanian players I might recruit for them. I'd look at the free agents that are likely to be available around then. I say likely. Obviously, I have no idea, but there are some players that we know are contracted till the end of 2027. And also look at some players who might not be free agents that I would potentially trade for. So let's get into it. Great. So what I'm going to do first is poach the Tasmanian players in the league currently. Now, I do realize that in a real life scenario, there's no guarantee guys like Riley Sanders, Colby McKercher, James Leak, and Ari Schoenmaker are all willingly going to walk to Tasmania. It's possible. It's entirely possible as well that they stay loyal to their host clubs. So I named those four players because they all went in last year's draft. Three of them were first round prospects. McKercher went pick three. Sanders went something like pick six. I think Leak was 17. So three, you know, pretty high level talents. Ari Schoenmaker went a little bit later in the draft. So I'm ripping them out of their respective clubs now. All those players will be pretty much 22 by round one of 2028. Then I looked at some old Older players, slightly older players that are Tasmanian. So Lockie Cowan from Carlton will be 23. Sam Banks from Richmond will be 24. Jai Menzi, 25 from Essendon. Chase Jones will be 28. So that's a good glut of talented established players that I'm taking for Tassie. Now that's not all of the Tasmanian players. I've picked out the most age appropriate. And I've also come up with five over 30 players that hail from Tasmania that I'm going to pinch. Because if you remember Gold Coast and GWS, they recruited a bunch of like really old players. Like GWS had like Chad Corns and Dean Brogan. So the Tasmanian equivalents here, let's go with Lockie Weller. He'll be 31. Alex Pierce will be 32. 
Jake Kolodziasny will be 32. Toby Nankervis at 33 as a ruckman could still be, you know, appropriate for AFL level. The one that I'm probably a bit iffy on is I'm going to take Brody Majacek because I'm starting to run out of players. He will be 35. He's Tasmanian originally. Could a 35-year-old Brody Majacek come for one season for Tasmania? In this scenario, he does. There's some older players like Jeremy Howe that I think, you know, just a little bit too old. Great. So I've got a crux, a crux, a nucleus, if you will, of veteran and, you know, young talent, as well as some established players in that mix already onto the list. So let's talk about free agents. Now, there is a graphic that I'll put up on the screen now. This is from Fox Footy, and they looked at the players who will be out of contract and free agents at the end of 2027. As you can see, some really quality players there. I'm going to just take four. I'm obviously not going to take all of them. There's going to be a salary cap, and obviously I'm playing a little bit fast and loose with the rules here, but I'm going to say let's take four out of this list. All of these players will be 26 turning 27 uh, during the 2028 season, and the first thing I want to do is pick a key position player. Now, I think the best one there is Sam De Koning, so welcome aboard. You are now a Tasmanian devil. I wanted to then pick two midfielders and a forward. Now, this is subjective, and we could all have a little bit of fun with this, but I decided to go Caleb Zerong. I really, really like Caleb Zerong, and Obviously, coming off a 46 possession game uh, as I record this, but also, you know, an all Australian player. I've also gone Will Day, just a little bit of a point of difference. Still a midfielder, but, you know, he's got that athleticism, that Pendlebury like grace, I think. I'd like him as a bit of a marquee player. So, Sarong and Day, sorry, Hawthorne and Fremantle fans. And then I needed a forward. He might not be the next best player on the list, but I've also got McKercher and Sanders in this team, so I don't need another midfielder. And I've gone with Cody Waitman. Again, a few other players there, but I think as an electrifying small forward, Cody Waitman is my choice. Awesome. So we have have a pretty strong nucleus here. Now I've mapped out my 22 and I'm going to show you the 22 shortly, but I realized that this team desperately lacks forwards, especially tall forwards. So I'm going to trade for three more players that are out of contract to the 2027. So I'm not conjuring this. These players are already contracted to 2027. I'm going to trade for Jack Higgins, who, who will be 29. I'm going to trade for Peter Wright as my key forward. He will be 31. Same thing with Marbio Chol. Trade Again, he will be 31. So none of these will break the bank. Obviously, quality players, particularly Higgins and Wright, in my opinion. But they pat out my forward line, which was looking a little bit weak. So let's go through my best 22. Sweet. So back line is headed by Alex Pierce and Sam DeConing. So some established talent in there and a veteran. Ari Shonmaker is the third tall. Lockie Weller slides back to a halfback flank later in his career. Colin Jasny and James Leake. So it's a solid back six. Again, not trying to win the premiership in my first year. Midfield is looking pretty sweet. Chase Jones, who will be 28, with Sanders and Nekercher, who are 22, still prior to their prime. That could be potentially a pretty damn good good center line. Then looking down at the followers there, Nan Kervis in the rock, Caleb Sarong and Will Day. So Sanders, Sarong and Day is a shit hot midfield and that plus McKercher who I've slapped on a wing, could obviously play on ball, could obviously float back and play off the flank. That's talented. That's a damn good midfield. I'm happy with that. The forward line was really hard to recruit for. You got Wright, Majacek and Scholl as the talls. Not amazing, particularly given they're 35, 31 and 31. But that was kind of what the market provided to me. But the smalls I really like. So Waitman and Higgins are really good small forwards. Jai Menzi, I think, is a little bit of an underrated young gun as well. So then we go to the bench, and you got Lockie Cowan and Sam Banks. Again, just the probably the least proven of all the Tasmanian recruits, but also probably in their prime, so maybe best 22 players. And then instead of you know going through a few more, let's accept the fact that Tasmania are probably going to have pick one and two. The only players I had to trade for in this scenario were Higgins, Wright, and Scholl, and none of those are going to be trades for pick one and two. So on the surface, I mean, that's a pretty old team, you'd think, but I actually ran an average age over this team, and it's about 26.4, give or take, because I didn't go and find everyone's actual birthday, but at 26 and a half. And for context, Collingwood were 27 years old and 10 months when they took on Sydney. So it's old. It'll be one of the older best 22 but the overall list will be young because everything behind this will be draft picks and you know I can't tell who's going to be pick one and two let alone the later picks in that draft I mean for pick one I could have you know come up with a fake Harley Reid I could have called him I don't know Riley Reid where have I heard that name before now that's definitely not a real person there you go that is my crack at their best 22 Following on from this, I actually thought it would be kind of a fun video to make a video about, you know, starting an expansion side in 2024. What would that look like? Because we know the draft picks, we know the out of contract players. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that sort of concept for a video. I'm probably going to do it anyway, but let me know. There you have it, guys. That is my hypothetical first Tasmania team. Obviously, not going to win the premiership in its first year, but uh, gives you a little bit of insight as to the players that might be on the market around then, as well as the Tasmanian uh, players that could be headhunted by the team. But as always, hope you're enjoying the content, guys. And for now, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.